Okay, so this is exercise five um, for week five. So we're going to go ahead and make our new project. Well, it's loading. Our challenge is going to be create a project to test global variables and race conditions. Basically, this program tells us what happens when you have two things trying to write to the same indicator at the same time, and it is not working, um, because you don't know which one's going to take over, so we're going to figure out how that works. So it wants us to make global variables, they're kind of like shared variables, but they make a new VI when you do it, so we're going to make just a blank VI, and then we're going to open it up, and this is going to be really big, so we're just going to squeeze this side and pull this side. So we have to make two indicators, we have to have a round LED for this one, and a round LED for this one which they're both boolean, so we're just going to label these as loop 2 and loop 1. So those are there. We're going to go ahead and put our indicator in there. That's going to tell us what the number it is. So that's going to be our first part. Now we're going to need a flat sequence because we want it to do these things simultaneously, or not simultaneously, but um, one after the other. So we're going to add frame. There's going to be five frames in this one. So now we want to create a global variable. So we're just going to go here and we're going to right click in the first one. We're going to go into our... where's our variables? Oh, structures. Global variable. We'll put this in here. Now, we want this number to be 10 to begin with. Um, we're just going to see what happens when we try to write to these things. So, we're, it's not connecting right now. So, what we're going to do is double click on our global variable. So, that's going to give us another panel. So, we're just going to put a control in here. And that's going to be our little control. And we're just going to click our numeric because that's what's in here. We can choose whatever is in here. So if I put another one in here and I put an indicator, I can click on this and I can choose numeric 2, but we're just going to stick with numeric 1. So now that first one's in there, we can go to the second piece because the first piece was only needed for that one. So we're going to go ahead and go into our second area. Um, so we're going to have loop 1 and loop 2 in the same one. Um, make my bigger. So our second piece is we're going to need it to write that global variable to our indicator. So we have our indicator, we're just going to write, put our indicator in here, we're going to copy and paste this variable into here, and as I showed you before, we're just going to change this to a read. Connect that in here. So now we're going to make the two pieces that interfere with each other that everybody doesn't like because they screw up the program. So, we're just going to make two while loops for each of these, trying to do two different things. So, we're going to go ahead and just create while loop one. I'm just going to copy that so it's the same size and paste it. And while loop two. So as you can see, we're just going to take these variables. These are all the same variable. There's only one global variable in here. So we're just going to take that variable. And the first time for the first loop, we're going to add 2 to that and then write it back. The second time, we're going to add it, add 1 and put it back. So here's the issue. You're seeing these are happening at the same time. So we don't actually know which one's going to take over. We're hoping that they'll just add 3. And then over here, it's just going to take a uh, property node which basically rewrites this uh, this would rewrite this and these two would rewrite these uh, two booleans so we're just going to go ahead and make our loops real quick we'll go in our loops we're going to make this number right here we're going to copy and paste this again so it's just going to read this number that, make our adding sign, 
and we'll create a constant. Add two. Take this number. Look it in here. It's adding two. So we're just going to copy and paste this one because this one's already right. Put this one here. Run this back. And we want it to show on these lights, these LEDs, when each loop is working. So we're just going to put a Boolean and put a true constant so it's running it during this. And... So we get our true in there. Now to make this easier for time, we're just going to copy and paste this and put it in this one. And since that's in there already, we're just going to change this number to 1 because the second time through it's going to be a 1. Easy. So then once again we're going to have to make another um, boolean true constant so it turns that LED on. I don't know why this is labeled as loop 3, because it is only loop 2. Unless there's another one that got created, which I really hope there isn't. Yeah, there wasn't. So now that's all built, so we have each piece. Now we have to have a way to stop it, so we're just going to put a true in each of these. And we can close this build variable, or just shut it. You don't, don't exit out of it. And we're going to put our true constants in here. So once this becomes true, it's just going to stop it after it does this piece. Because it's going to go through this loop once, and then this true is going to tell it to stop, so it's not going to go through again. So we're going to do that again on this side. Put our true constant in. Okay, so now, if we did this now, it's going to show it's doing this loop. And it's never going to go to the next loop, because there's nothing telling it to. So, what are we going to do about that? It's just showing the first one, it's not doing anything. It's not going to this piece yet, it's just showed this, and it's not doing anything. Why is it not doing that? And that is still on, why is it doing that? Oh, it's a shut off. So, we have to make a timer on here. So that these loops will go through in our right amount of time. So it won't just fly through like our previous did exercise did with the arrays where we didn't put a timer in there. And it just went through really, really fast. So we're just going to build the timer in there again for the same amount of time as we did last time. We're just going to create a constant. And we're going to set it for 1,000 milliseconds, which is just one second. And once again, to save time, I'm going to be lazy and copy and paste it in the next one. So that's the two loops that are contradicting each other. So now we're going to go in here in our next section. And we have to... Oh, there's only four. No wonder. So we're going to get rid of this one. Delete this frame. So make this frame really big. So now what we have to do is, as you look, as I showed you before, it's just doing this and it's not rewriting them. Why is it not doing that? Well. We have to take those numbers, these that were already written, and it's just displaying this one to begin with, because it's reading the 10, and then reading it. So, we have to go here, and we have to create a con or a property node of this. And we have to go to value, because it's going to be a number. And we're just going to put this in here, and, wait a minute, it's read. So we're just going to change this to write. And we're going to copy this. And we're going to paste it into here. Because we want that variable writing. The new variable writing in. And we're just going to put that in there. Now we want these LEDs to make sure they're turned off. So we're just going to do the same thing with these. We're going to create a property node. And we're going to put it as a value. Same thing. Um, create property node. Value place it in here. We're going to have to make these all right. So this one's writing to We're just going to put false booleans in here, or false constants, so that it's telling these lights that even if they're still on, I want them to turn off. So it's going to turn off. 
So that should be all we need. It's going to take this number, this 10, and it's going to show it here first. And then it's going to do these two, and it's going to wait one second before it displays them. And we'll see which one actually takes over. And then at the end, this will just make sure that it displays it and shuts off all the lights. Kind of like a doormat. So we look at uh, what Mr. McKeel made, and it looks the same. So we're just going to keep that. And we're going to try it out. We'll see how it works. So we're going to go to our thing. We're going to just run it once. So you see one loop ran. You see that for some reason only one light turned on. And they contradict each other. It's not working right. So we don't know why it's doing that. That's okay. Let me just see what we have here. See if this is... Uh... Yep, that would be an issue. Okay, so I found out why that other light was not turning on. Our variable was not in the right spot. Let's figure out where this actually is. This actually got pulled behind. So let's just delete this and make it again. Because we have loop 1 and loop 2. So we'll just drag this back in here. I don't know why it did that. So now we have to recreate our property node and our value and just place it back in here. Reconnect it in. So it's false. Oh, look, I made my own mistake. We have to change this to right. Notice how it didn't work before. So there we go. So now it should work. So now it's going to show up as our 10. And it's going to add these two together as 13. Now, watch what happens when you run it together. And it's going to show you what happened as it goes through. This light, you click on that light bulb until you even happen. So it's got the 10. It puts it in here. It displays your 10. Now it's going into these loops, and they're calculating. And they're writing it back to the variable. It hasn't done anything yet. It hasn't displayed anything. Now it's going to go after it waits one second. It's going to go into here, and it's going to display that number. Now, for some reason, whenever you run it through the light bulb, it goes to 12 instead of 13 like you do it the other way. That just shows you that it's not stable and that these are contradicting each other, kind of like it says in the PowerPoint as it's a race condition. So it's not, it's not accurate. It's not going to um, give you the same every time, um, depending on what your situation is. So this is exercise 5. I hope this helped. Um, thank you for watching and watch my other videos.